When we refer to suspension training, we don't mean this. Although that does look like good fun. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'm going to introduce you to TRX suspension training if you've not used it before. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. TRX is an abbreviation for Total Resistance Exercise and was developed by a Navy SEAL in the 1990s. Today it's been adopted into gyms, studios and households as a great way for a total body workout from a small packaged versatile bit of kit. You can take it anywhere with you and use your body weight as the resistance with the aid of gravity. However, initially to the untrained eye, it can look very intimidating. So I'm going to talk you through the setup and adjustments for using it, what not to do with it, and then talk you through five safe and effective beginner exercises that will be beneficial for most common health conditions and will work the whole body. If you're looking to purchase one, I'll leave a link in the description below. And although they're not cheap, starting at around £100, they do offer the ability to perform most of the exercises you would do in a fully equipped gym from the comfort of your own home. I'll also leave some timestamps in the description below in case you come back here again and want to review one particular part of this video. Right, without further ado, let's get started. Right, a couple of safety tips before you start. Firstly, just have a check of your TRX when you get it out of your bag to check that none of the straps are actually fraying. So just check that first. If they are fraying, it's probably not worth using. Um, and secondly, make sure that you're using some sort of, wearing some sort of shoes or trainers. That's just to aid the actual foot contact with the floor to stop you from sliding around as I did when I first started practicing with it. So make sure you've got some sort of shoes on. Right, to set your TRX up, your kit bag that you have with the TRX comes with two different types of anchor straps. One is just like a long strap with a clip on the end that you can use outside. So if you've got like a frame in a park or something that you can use, you can then use the long strap to wrap around the frame a few times to make sure it stops it from sliding from side to side. And then clip it to its actual self on the actual strap once you've wrapped it around. And then the TRX then just clips into the bottom of the strap through the little loop at the end where the actual TRX badge is. So that's one way of doing it. What we're gonna do though is use the door anchor, which is this one. So we're gonna use this for internal use with the door. And all we need is to use the clip on the end of the TRX to go through the loop at the end again where the TRX badge is. And then the door anchor bit just goes over the top of the door, it pretty much into the center of the door close the door, make sure the door is completely shut, and then just pull this towards you until it's really, really tight. And just check it first to make sure that it's quite secure. So the anchor's then secured it to the door. Um, if you are gonna use it on the side of the door where the door opens, so if I was gonna use it on this one where the door's opening towards me, I would put the TRX as close as I can to the point of where the hinges are, just to stop the pressure. If I was doing that here, it's obviously got more pressure on the door. So do it closer to where the hinges are. But this is the recommended way, doing it where the door's closing towards you. Once you've done that, uh, you can then also adjust the actual length of the straps to what you want. You'll notice I've set one side to being really long and one side to being short. For the purpose of the exercises that we're doing today, they're all gonna be on the mid length. So we've got short, mid length, and long. So to adjust it, if you need to shorten it, all you need to do is put your thumb on the clip grab hold of the yellow strap and then pull it up until you get to the mid length one. And then to shorten it, you just grab the main strap itself and again, grab the clip and just pull it down until you get to the mid length. And there's lines on the actual, on the actual um, strap itself to indicate where it should be. So I've put that on the mid length one. And then you are pretty much set up, ready to go. Okay, three things not to do while you're using uh, the TRX, and they all start with an S, funnily enough. So the first one is sawing, and that basically means where you're applying more tension to one side of the strap than you are to the other side, and it effectively starts doing this. 
And what that does is that starts to wear away the actual strap at the top. Uh, there is a safety uh, level part of the strap here that you do need to try and keep horizontal, which will stop it from going any further. But the purpose is for when we're doing the exercises, there should always be the same amount of tension on each side so that you're not doing this sort of movement. So that's the first no-no. The second one is slackening. Now this is where you can end up doing an exercise and then releasing the tension on the actual K on the straps themselves. So as an example, if I was doing a squat, there's tension on there at the moment, but as I come up and I release it, you can see it starts to slacken the actual straps. Again, that shouldn't happen. They should always be on tension from the beginning of the exercise all the way through to the end. So there's no slackening of the straps at any point while you're going through the exercise itself. So that's the second one. And the third one is scraping. Now this tends to happen particularly with the chest press exercise, which we're gonna go through today, where people will do the exercise and they'll hold the straps and they will come down too low. So effectively now the, the actual straps are sliding along my body. So I'm actually scraping the straps along my body, arms, shoulders, and then the upper part of my back. So that comes down to technique. So while you're performing any of the exercises, the actual straps shouldn't be scraping the actual body itself. Okay, so that's the third no-no. So there's your three S's, what not to do. Right, the first exercise we're gonna do then is the chest press. Um, and this is similar to doing like a press up and we're working the muscles across the chest, the shoulders and the back of the arms. So for this one, I've got the TRX anchor point behind me. So then I can take the straps out in front, the arms length away. And it's important with most of these exercises, you actually start the exercise at the end of the movement. So this is where I would normally finish the chest press position. So I just need to then adjust my feet and I should have my feet about a shoulder width wide to make sure I can feel that I'm leaning into the strap so I'm causing uh, some tension at this point because then as I lower my body into the movement, then I'm continuously keeping that tension all the way throughout the movement even when I've finished. If I wasn't there and I was in this position, so I might have started thinking, right, I'm gonna go from here when I push up, then you can see then that it's slackening off, which I said in the earlier on that we don't do. So make sure that you've got the tension, slightly lean forwards. The hands will be about shoulder height to start off with. And then as you then bend at the elbows, let the elbows come down low. So we're not lifting up the elbows high. Let the elbows come down at about 45 degree angle from the body. Just go as far as you comfortably can and then push yourself back up to the start position. As you go through the motion, the body should stay pretty much in a straight line. So I'm not sagging my hips down as I go forwards and at the same time I'm not leaving the hips behind and just letting my body come forwards. So important that the whole body goes forwards with it. Now as a regression, what you can do if you find that uncomfortable, particularly if it's your first time using it, you can actually place one foot slightly forwards and just literally have the toes of the foot on the floor. So you're not trying to place too much weight through it, but that should give you a little bit of confidence then as you go forwards, it will feel a little bit easier as you push yourself back up to the start position, but still make sure your body's staying in line with the leg that's on the floor at the back. Okay, and then to make it harder, you can obviously have your feet to come closer together, so that will make it a smaller base of support, so that'll make it more difficult from a balance point of view. And then to make the exercise harder and more intense, you then need to take your feet closer to the anchor point. Now you don't need to move them that much. If I've only stepped backwards a few inches, that should be enough to make the exercise that much harder because now I've got more of my body weight going in through my arms as I do the movement. And obviously the further I go back, the more I'm gonna lean forwards as I go through the exercise. So the lower I'm going and the harder it is, okay? So that's how you can progress the chest press. Second exercise is the inverted row. So this is basically opposite to the chest press where I'm gonna be pulling my body weight up rather than pushing my body weight up. So therefore it's gonna be working the muscles across the top of the back and a little bit into the top of the arms. So for this one, I'm gonna turn and face the anchor point. Once I've got hold of the straps, again, I'm gonna start at the end of the position, which is where I'm gonna pull my body weight up. So I need to bring my feet shoulder width wide and a little bit further forwards with the fist pretty much touching the side of the ribs and the elbows pinned back behind me, squeezing the shoulder blades back because that's gonna be my end position. Now I should feel a little bit of tension already in the muscles and if I do then it means I'm in the right start position. If I've got my feet too far back, it'll probably feel like with the tension on it, it'll feel like I'm being pulled forward. So you do need to move your feet forwards a little bit 
just until you feel that tension in the muscles across the top of the back. So you feel like the straps are holding you. Then the movement from there is I'm going to keep my body in a straight line. So I'm not letting the hips sag, but I'm going to keep it in a straight line as I let my arms straighten out until I get to the start position and then pull myself back up to that end position. So I get the fist then either side of the ribs and then start the motion again. So to make this exercise slightly easier, if you find it, because you are obviously leaning backwards, if you find you, you're not very confident doing that, what you can do is take one foot back behind you. So you've just got the toes on the floor, so still got most of the weight on the front foot. And then same again, as I just straighten my arms out, it will just give me that little bit more confidence because I've got that foot back behind me. To make the exercise harder, I can bring my feet closer together like we did with the chest press, which means it's more difficult to keep control of the TRX laterally, so that'll make it a little bit harder. But if you want to increase the intensity of the exercise, then you'll need to then, like we did with the chest press, move your feet closer to the anchor point. So the more I move my feet forwards, the more I'm now beginning to angle the body. So now that's making it that much harder because I've got more of my body weight going through the arms. So that's the inverted row. Right, we're going on to the squat now. So we're gonna work the muscles into the legs because uh, we're particularly working around the hip and the knee joint. So for this one, like the inverted row, we're gonna turn and actually face the anchor point itself. The start position is very, very similar to, to what we did in the inverted row. So I'm gonna have my feet to shoulder width wide. I'm gonna have my fist tucked into the side of the waist with the elbows back. And again, I should feel like there's a little bit of tension on the actual straps themselves. And then from there, I'm just gonna lower my body down towards the floor. So as I bend at the hips, dropping the bottom down, bending at the knees. As I lower myself down, see if you can get your hips level with your knees. And then the important bit is to push through the feet into the floor to drive your hips up and forwards again till you get to the top. Okay, now what tends to happen where people are using the, the straps, they kind of rely more on their arms to get themselves back up to the start position. So we do end up seeing a lot of this where they just drop their hips back like this and then they'll pull themselves back up to the start position and then they'll obviously slacken off the actual straps. So make sure that it is the legs that are doing the movement, they're the ones that are doing the work. This is just there for a little bit of confidence to allow you to then get yourself back up to a start position here. Okay, so if you can, what you can start to do is lower your hips further down. So you go into a deeper squat position. That'll just make it more effective. If you wanna make the exercise more intense, then you need to then rely less on the actual straps. So that means moving yourself further away, it might mean then lengthening the straps. So then when the straps are on more of a horizontal angle, you haven't got as much to be able to pull up on. So then it puts more reliance on the muscles in the legs to do the work. Likewise, you can actually shorten the straps. So you'll end up being closer. So the straps will be more vertical, so it's easier to then pull up if you need it. So it's kind of like as a safety thing. But remember, we're trying to get most of the work done through the feet. So once I'm squared off, I'm in my start position, I'm gonna lower my bottom down to the floor and then I'm not really relying on this, so it's literally fingertip touch to drive the feet through the floor to get my hips up and back to where I started. So that's the squat. Right, exercise four is the reverse lunge. So again, we're working all the muscles from the hips down, basically all the muscles in the legs and the bottom. So again, I'm gonna turn and face the TRX anchor point and once I've got hold of the straps, I've got my feet to shoulder width wide, so the setup again is very, very similar to the squat. So there's some tension already on the straps. And the movement from there then is I'm gonna take one foot back behind me. So I've got the back foot up on the ball of the foot. And then from there, I'm gonna bend the back knee down towards the floor. So I'm keeping my body upright. So my shoulders are always over my hips and the hips are over the back knee as I go down. And then I'm gonna push that back leg up straight, bring that foot forwards, and then that completes the movement then you do the same on the opposite side. So from there, I've got one foot goes back. Remember, I'm always keeping tension on here, but not trying to pull on it too much, like we did with the squat. So back foot on the ball of the foot, bend the back knee down towards the floor. Again, go as low as you can, but you've got this for your confidence. Push through that back leg to straighten that back knee up, bring the back foot forwards. So there's your reverse lunge movement. And like with the squat, to make it harder, what you can do is you can lengthen the straps so you're further away from the actual anchor point, and that'll make it harder because then you've got, not got as much to pull on. 
to make it easier, obviously make them shorter so you're closer to the anchor point. So it makes it a little bit easier if you need that assistance to pull yourself back up. Important thing here is to still make sure, like with the squat, you are pushing through the feet. So it is the legs that are doing the work. So even though I've got hold of the straps and I'm maintaining tension, I'm not trying to pull myself back up from here, back up to the start position. Okay, I'm actually pushing through my feet through the floor to get back to the start position throughout the lunge movement. So that's the reverse lunge. The last exercise is the back and hip extension. So this is the one that's working mainly the muscles around the core, particularly as well into the bottom and into the lower part of the back. And it's a great way to really start to work and stretch all the muscles down the posterior chain. So the hamstrings on the back of the leg, the glutes, the back, and the middle part of the back, the lat muscles as well. So with this, um, there are two versions. The main version is classified as an overhead back and hip extension where we've got our arms up in the air, but I'm gonna show you an easier version where we've got the arms out in front to get you started. So the start position is I need my arms out straight with my fists level at the same height as my shoulders and there should be some tension. So remember, this is the end position, so I should feel a little bit of tension. If I've got my feet too far back and I feel like I'm being pulled forwards, you know you've taken your feet too far backwards. So it's just making sure that the end position, I should feel like I'm leaning back just slightly to create some tension in the straps. The movement from there then is I'm not gonna, they're gonna stay where they are, I'm just gonna move my body around. So I'm gonna bend at the hips to drop the body back down until I can see if I can get my head down between my arms. And then at that point, I'm gonna drive my hips up and forwards to get back to the end position, okay? So I start by pushing the bottom backwards, bending at the hips, dropping down. You'll feel stretchy, I can feel the stretch there on the back of the legs and then drive the hips up and forwards to get you back to your start position. Now a common mistake with this one is when people go down, they'll forget that they need to keep a neutral spine position. So as they start to bend at the hips, when they feel a little bit of a stretch, what they'll do is they'll round off, they'll start to bend the knees and they'll come into this stretch position like this before they come back to the start position. So we wanna make sure that the knee stays straight, we're only bending at the hip, and we need to keep the back pretty much in its neutral curved position. So from there, as I go down, I'm bending at the hip, arms are staying where they are, so my head's dropping down. When I feel the tension on the back of the legs, at that point I'm gonna drive my hips up and forward, so I'm not really pulling any more on the actual straps themselves, on the handles, because all the work's being done through the core and through the hips as I drive up and forwards, okay? So that's the back and hip extension. Now we've gone through the five exercises, it's worth pointing out that you should warm up first before performing these exercises. For an example, I've done a great mobility warm up that you can check out and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can watch that video too. When you perform the exercises, do them in a controlled manner, aiming to do one to two sets of about eight to 12 repetitions for each one. And each repetition should take about five seconds to complete. If you prefer, you can do each exercise once and then repeat them all again a second time in a circuit format. Finally, at the end when you've finished your exercises, conduct a few gentle stretches. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below to a video that I've done if that helps. I hope this video has given you the confidence for using your TRX now. Let me know which exercise is your favourite in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today or found it informative, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below or share it with others to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from these videos. And remember to stay active, keep moving, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.